sightings have been going on lately, I went ahead and brought home a project that uh, I went over, found a leak in the evaporator. So if you guys like videos like this and you want to see more of it, give the video a thumbs up. Make sure you leave a comment down below and don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell so you can see more like it. All right, so we're going to first pull this thing out. We're going to get up here on my cart. Like I said, basically I brought this thing home. I'm going to go ahead and do it. Hey, what else would I rather be doing on a Saturday? Than this basically I was off uh, Wednesday Thursday and Friday and I was hoping to do this earlier in the week but I didn't get to do it I put a tap here on this part right here which we're going to go ahead and put a solder in spot on that so we can actually check pressures I want to show you guys something new from DeWalt basically it's a six-in-one driver I'll leave a link in my toolbox area down below if you guys want to help support the channel you purchase it through Amazon along with a lot of other things that I've already picked out. I get a small percentage of a profit. You pay the same price. Got, uh, the control panel up here that we gotta take out. Just snap together plastic. I am getting paid for this, just not making time and a half, like uh, you would figure for a Saturday, but that's my choice to do this. Basically, I'm just doing this for more of something to record. We could technically go ahead and cut those. Um, this thing was pulling into a vacuum. If you notice one of my other videos, which uh, ended up going back on it a couple times because the capillary tube kept getting plugged up because the oil basically got uh, a lot of moisture in it and it just, it breaks down, the stuff floats everywhere. Since we're getting rid of this, we'll just bend this stuff out of my way. Got that out. Like I said, that's all gonna get embraced, so it won't really make much of a difference. Should be able to pull this right out the front. There we go. So that's gonna come right out the front. This foam is gonna to need to be reused. Here's the electric heater elements. They look fairly in decent shape. Uh, if I remember correctly, I've already tested those when we had it plugged in. So we're gonna go ahead and take that coil out, gently put it over here, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and see what we gotta unhook to get these out of there. Let's pull right out. Boy, that is not much of a cap tube at all. We gotta change this oil in the compressor. Okay, so we'll go ahead and bend this with the bending tool. That should allow us room to get it in there so that the cover does not hit it when it's put back in there. And st should still get us full flow. We could have used a smaller one I just don't like these, they're kind of dainty. The reason why we're gonna braze this in here now, because once I got that in there, there'll be one of the few joints that I have to do that's not gonna get nitrogen on it when I do my work. So once that's done, we'll be able to pressurize this, and then we'll be able to blow nitrogen through the compressor, come out through the top. Obviously this one here, I'm not gonna to try to run the nitrogen through it. It's on the suction side. It's gonna be very minimal, so. It's not going to be a humongous deal as if it was on, say, the side that had the capillary tubes and stuff. So we're just going to go ahead and get our base metal here. So about there, just give it a light tap. There we go. Boom. Look okay, at that, technically got all the way around it. We'll just give it one more little tap. There we go, just make it a little stronger. There we go. Oh wow, that's beautiful. If you look at that, it's nice and strong. Got plenty of build bridge here going on. Goes all the way around. That worked out really well. Got a little bit of burnage there. Should probably put a wet towel there, but this is inside the unit. It didn't charcoal it. All right, so we're purging some nitrogen through here. I crimped off my suction line here. So we got a little bit coming out through the capillary tubes and stuff. Just basically trying to basically get some of the oxygen and refrigerant that's left over in there out of there. There we go. Should 
free us up to move that out of the way a little bit more. There we go. So we got that cleaned up. That'll make it slide right in there, all nice and pretty. Makes it very easy to get it back together. And I am going to probably just cut it. I uh, don't know if I really care to heat those capillary tubes up any more than what they already have been, probably when they were installed. Looking back, I kind of wish that uh, we would have ordered new capillary tubes for it. We'll go ahead and sand that up and get it ready to go. I do not see any oil in there at all. I'm less than impressed. We've got a 90 on here that you can't get through there with that piece there in the way. Should be able to come in like this and hook it and then rotate it and it should go through. All right, so we've got her in place. She's got a few screws in there. Not sure what's up with the soil. These kind of compressors here usually are not my cup of tea tried to replace the oil it doesn't pour out so I'm not going to do a bunch of stupidity trying to do more oil or anything like that we'll put it exactly where it was before and uh, move on all right just a little bit of our armaflex insulation stuff glued it up in there I was afraid that after a short duration of time that might fall down and get caught into the fan blade all right so far we got them back into place here I put my cap that was on the line down there originally there. Right now we're purging nitrogen through. Sometimes I'll run these a little bit wet. So that's gonna be right up against that insulation there. That'll hold it away from it so it's not touching it. That'll allow my flame to get all the way around it. Now, something I didn't learn until later, and believe it or not, this is kind of sad, but like I said, I didn't read the book. Um, you can blow through the suction side, it's gonna go right through the compressor and come out through the discharge. Obviously you pressurize the high side, it's not going out through the suction or you got crap valves. But you can do it through the suction side, it'll come out through the compressor and come out through the discharge. That opened it up plenty. So we've got it crimped in between there. I got them an equal distance, even though it doesn't look like it. Both of my cap tubes there are blowing through free and clear, so we know that they're wide open. So we've got it in there. So we know it's coming through the capillary tubes, through the evaporator, coming back to the compressor. Do a pressure test on it, make sure that it holds. I scan it for leaks. AccuTrack Gooseneck PPE. Gooseneck, check out the video. Got a link for that up here in the top. I'm gonna give my two cents on the evacuation process here. If we went with one hose, because I heard some discussion about this, kind of made me laugh. I suppose it depends on whether you're using a TXV. But let's go ahead and, and say that we're afraid the big boogeyman's gonna sneak in, whatever, leak through the hose, whatever the case. Can we go ahead and use this monster hose here, pull through the suction side? You're not gonna pull through the compressor. Ain't gonna happen. You do, you got <laughs> valves, okay? It's not gonna suck back through the compressor. So you're gonna suck it all out through here, through the suction side. It's gonna come through the evaporator and it's gonna come over here to the capillary tube. Now you're at your capillary tube. You gotta go through this massive restriction. Then you've gotta pull all this condenser area down. I would love to have someone tell me how they think that's a smart idea. I would rather pull it through the manifold gauge set than do it with just one hose. I've cheated and used my manifold off one side of my uh, tree on my vacuum pump. I find that to even be better than doing it with one hose. To me, it makes absolutely no sense. Okay, this is about as shady as I get. Went ahead, hooked it up traditional. I went ahead and hooked my hose there. I can isolate it by doing that like that. And this like that. There might be some weird freaking thing going on in there that the oil don't come out. If not, it's in the system. It didn't leak out all over the, the unit because there's none, none in the uh, bottom here. But uh, we are rising a little bit at a 1.8. We've got her pulled down pretty good. We're down to 590 at a leak rate of 1.2. There's a good chance that that ball valve could be leaking a little bit on this hose set here, which wouldn't surprise me. Like I said, blood all the way up to here. Go ahead and release it to there, and then let her fly. Got our probe out here in front. We've got 70 degrees out here. 
And our probe out of the front there is a 57.9. She is sweating. We can put her on low. See what she does. There we go. Let it do its thing there. Come on over here. It's 70 degrees out here, 80, 90. We got 25 degrees over ambient on our head pressure. And we're running about a 38 degree uh, evaporator. For giggles, we could go ahead and check superheat just to see what we got. Try that there. I don't know how good that's going to do. 17 degrees on the temperature split. That also is going to determine also and change depending on where you're at in the uh, coil. There's a little bit lower. Over there, probably going to be a little higher. Running about a 19.5 degree superheat, not bad. 20 degree subcooling, that's if we're getting good contact there. So now at a 70 degree, we're running 27 degrees. So 80, 90, 27 degrees over ambient there. This is not the same compressor that was inside of the uh, Frederick unit. It's been bothering me, where did the oil go that was in there? And basically this unit here, this compressor, I brought it home to cut it apart because I really don't run into these a lot. I can't even think of the name of it <clears throat> but I'm gonna cut this freaking thing apart and see if there's a reason why the oil didn't come out looks to me all that is is a uh, an accumulator so it's got a splash plate basically here with a screen to catch any crap that gets inside there basically any liquid that come in would splash around come down to here, boil off, and then get sucked in. It's kind of interesting, I've never cut one of these apart. Kind of weird. You would figure oil, I'm pretty sure I didn't drain this thing out. You'd figure oil would be coming out of this thing. I'm pretty sure this one had a shorted compressor. I do not believe I dumped any oil out of this thing, but I could be wrong, I may have already done did it, but. We're starting to leak some oil here, so I would say there's something in there that just didn't want to come out. All right, this is kind of cool. I have never cut one of these apart, believe it or not. So all of our pumping action must be right at that bottom. So there's the plug on the other side. Your discharge, if you notice, is out of the top. That's what's really wild. Basically, they're pressurizing the whole cabinet up on top here because generally a compressor has a discharge it comes right off of the piston area and connects to the outside world through the top or the side or whatever of the uh, compressor this one doesn't this is a little odd so basically you've got the uh, armature here causing the uh, or actually stator I'm gonna call it generator terms you've got the stator here basically making the uh, rotor turn and it's pumping down here on bottom and uh, there's a uh, the only place it's connected directly to it is the suction side here. So that would kind of explain to a point, it sounds to me like they're lubricating just the outside only. Maybe that's why they run hotter than heck all usually. This one here I do not believe had much in regards to oil noted on this thing at all either. It's 410A, um, doesn't say anything about the oil on this thing at all i mean there's no notation of how much oil it even holds so went ahead and tried taking these top screws out or bolts i should say and this doesn't really show a whole lot so i went ahead and chopped the bottom off this thing which that makes kind of a nice little stand if you wanted to like i don't know put a jack on it or something for a trailer if you didn't have one so anyhow if you look at the bottom of this nothing's even really exposed you've got a check valve or part of the valve system right here. You can see the spring in there. I'm gonna go ahead and take these off because I'm having a hell of a time getting into it. So I'll go ahead and take that off, but lubrication wise, this thing wouldn't take a whole lot. I mean, just enough to lubricate that bottom. So we're only talking probably five ounces maybe. So what I ended up doing was unscrewing that, which that's just a heavy hunk of metal that kind of just holds it there. 
and you've got an orbital deal going on here so when it spins there you go and right there basically it's like a scroll compressor I always remember them saying something about it being like a scroll compressor in a way but as it gets tighter, this is separating this chamber from this chamber. And as it comes down, it compresses it there. So there's really no valves, so to speak, with that. It's just compressing it, or I should say sucking on it. So it's going to pull it in to here. And then where in the world does it go from there? I don't know if it's going through the center. I suppose it could go through the center. It's got to separate it. You figure this was sealed. There's no real seals in there unless they're going with just like the oil. I have to do some research on it. I've really, like I said, you only see these compressors usually on little window units. And I believe... Some of the mini split stuff, but that's kind of interesting. Well, guys, if you liked the video, and like I said, if you want to see more like it, please hit that thumbs up button. Don't forget to subscribe, and we'll catch you guys on the next one. Yeah.